time to make peace with that for yourself so you can move the fuck on. Stop beating around the bush and trying to find the perfect way to do it and just fucking do it. In case you haven't heard, we have an Aries full moon happening on October 17th. Let's talk about it. And before you even think about skipping ahead, darling, I have a powerful, powerful video here for you today and you're not going to want to miss the first part of this video, okay? Don't miss the first part of this video. I am watching you. I am watching you. I don't know what is going on with my lighting. I don't like it, so hopefully this video comes out okay. Welcome back to the channel. If you are new here, my name is Tawny Michelle and I do all things astrology and spiritual spirituality related. I bring the cosmos down to earth so we can understand them and understand how they are playing out in our lives, how to integrate these different energies, how to use these different energies, and what they may be symbolizing in our lives and with our own personal development and healing, etc, etc. So if that is your jam, make sure to hit the subscribe button before you leave. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up. And by the way, one little other thing really quick, I am still doing personal readings. So if you need to know what in the hoo-ha is going on in your life right now and going on with you right now, definitely make sure to book that down below. Alrighty, we have an Aries full moon happening in the sky on October 17th. And this full moon is a powerful one. It is not technically an eclipse, even though it is in the sign of Aries. And we've been having a series of eclipses in Aries and Libra over the last, you know, almost 18 months now. But it's too far away from the node for it to be an eclipse. But that doesn't make it any less powerful, okay? So as I always start off with, what the fuck is a full moon? A full moon is when the sun and the moon are opposite of each other in the sky with the earth in the middle. So they are sitting on opposite sides of the earth. A full moon, what happens is the sun lights up the moon because they are across from each other. The reason that the moon looks full in the sky is because it is reflecting the sun's light, right? And this is very important to understand because this helps us understand what a full moon symbolizes in our lives here in the earthly realm. Okay, so because the moon is reflecting the sun's light, and because it is big and it is very much seen to its full extent, we can see the full shape of the moon in the sky on a full moon. This very much means that there's something coming to light within our lives at a very basic level. There's something being lit up. There is a, you know, area of our lives or certain things in our lives that are being lit up, you know, things coming out of the shadows, right? Now, because it is a full moon, which is after a new moon, two weeks after a new moon, a new moon is new beginnings, like we talked about in the new moon solar eclipse video last, a full moon moon deals with endings, wrapping things up, and peak moments. Personally, for me, I see full moons more so as peak moments, things kind of coming to fruition or things that we're noticing that we didn't quite notice before. But nonetheless, there can be kind of a culmination effect with full moons. We can see that maybe things are coming to a culmination or coming to a boiling point or even ending around a full moon. Now, this particular full moon is important though because it is wrapping up this series of eclipses, even though it's not an eclipse, it is wrapping up the series of eclipses that we've had in these signs of Aries and Libras and over the last like almost 18 months now. So this is the last full moon that we're going to have um, in Aries with the North Node in Aries as it's been traveling through. So we've been learning a lot of Aries and Libra lessons over the last 18 months. Aries and Libra are opposite signs, right? So let's talk about Aries first since this full moon is happening in Aries and I talked a lot about Libra in the last video for the Libra solar eclipse. So Aries as a sign very much deals with direct fiery energy. It is that spark that gets us going. It is very action oriented, like act first, think later kind of energy because it is the first sign of the zodiac and it is a cardinal fire sign, meaning it is that first spark of fire, that like, you know, burst of fire that we get to do something or take action or make a decision. It, it makes a decision very quickly and um, it doesn't need to weigh it out too much. It's just like, this is what I'm going to do and this is how I'm going to do it, right? So other than that, the other part of Aries is it is very much individual focus. So it's very much focused on individuality and the self. 
rather than other people. This is like, you know, the Aries full moon comes in every year around this time or somewhere in, you know, Libra season. And it is a time where we are like, okay, we've balanced things out enough. We've weighed out all of the options. We've been, you know, looking at all of the possible choices. We've been weighing out a decision or we've been focused too much on other people or worried about what other people think. Or maybe we've lost some of our own individuality to certain circumstances or social situations or relationships in our lives. And this is a time where we get direct and we're like, this is what I want to do and this is what I'm going to do. And we get this kind of spark of energy to move forward in our lives and to really take action and to be more direct. This is more so looking at actions rather than words and basing things off of action. So with this full moon <laughs> being opposite of the sun in Libra with the other side of the karmic lessons that we've been learning, Libra is very much about diplomacy and harmony and peace and kind of, you know, finding that middle ground and finding different solutions to conflict, right? Whereas Aries is very much like about facing conflict and going, going headfirst into it and not being scared to rile things up. You know, when you're a cardinal fire sign and you're just doing, doing, doing and thinking later, you're likely going to ruffle some feathers when you're always thinking about yourself, you know? But this is kind of the time of year where it's like, it's okay to be selfish, okay? And this is something I usually always bring up around the Aries full moon every year because in society, I think that we have this very negative uh, view on selfishness. We label worrying about ourselves or we label, you know, our refusal to sacrifice ourselves for others all the time as being selfish or taking some time to ourselves as selfish. And that's just simply untrue, right? <laughs> being selfish is you know, something completely different than being self-focused and doing what's best for yourself and loving yourself. You come to awakening and you come to really understanding your own spiritual journey and your own self, you know, through loving thyself, through respecting thyself, right? Through honoring thyself. If you don't have that, you're not going to be happy to some extent, right? Like we can find happiness in doing things for other people, but if we don't have that strong foundation of self, we're going to sacrifice elements of ourselves until we feel lost and not really know who we are anymore. Selfishness is completely different. Selfishness is derived from, honestly, insecurity and weakness and also um, <laughs> feeling very insecure about oneself so much so where there's an over focus on me, 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 which comes from a lack within, right? So I'm not talking about anything that comes from lack. I'm talking about something that comes from feeling full within because you know who you are, because you matter to you, because you genuinely just have an unconditional love of self. And that is so, 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 so big right now for this particular Aries full moon. With the sun being in Libra, we've been either weighing something out, you know, judging something, trying to balance out a certain area of our lives, trying to find the middle ground within ourselves or within, you know, an external situation, but it always starts within right? It always starts like you find balance externally through finding balance internally, through curing, curing that conflict within yourself. Like that will mirror in your external reality because your external reality always mirrors your internal reality, right? And so if you're having a lot of, you know, situations or there's been something that you've been stuck on, maybe you've been judging yourself too harshly. Maybe you've been judging others in your life too harshly. Maybe you've been stuck with like past versions of yourself kind of coming up or past situations and karmic cycles or past relationships kind of coming up, you know, on and off in your life. This is a time where it's like, Time to make peace with that for yourself so you can move the fuck on and do what you want to do. Stop talking about it. Stop thinking about it. Start doing it, right? This can be a time where people are making really big decisions that, you know, may shake things up because you're having to face a fear of starting a conflict by making these decisions right? But if you have healed that conflict about it within yourself, that's what matters here. I promise you, I can't say this for every situation, but if you heal that conflict within yourself and you mend that conflict within yourself and you're good with your decision and you move forward that way, you will be surprised how your external reality mirrors that. You may not run into the difficulty from others or the difficulty in your external reality that you think you're going to run into by making this decision or by finally putting yourself first 
and having some boundaries or having some, you know, edginess to you because you're being very direct. You know, this could also be many of you may have been holding in some kind of truth that you need to speak, that you need to get out, that you need to be direct about and stop beating around the bush and trying to find the perfect way to do it and just fucking do it, right? Like I had this spiritual urge to start a cleanse, like a a bodily cleanse, but I didn't really know what I was doing because I've never... I had never really done like a cleanse like this before and I was going back and forth in my mind about like and and therefore procrastinating on doing the cleanse because I was like well the directions say to eat to eat as close to nature as possible but like they put freaking stuff in everything these days so how am I gonna know that my food's actually natural and that this that and and like I was just so constantly back and forth about it. And then I realized like it is your intention that matters, right? Like it's my intention that matters. And as long as I like do the best I can, then it doesn't really matter. And so sitting here like weighing it out forever is just slowing me down. And so finally I started it a few days ago and I've stuck to it ever since. And it's not, I'm not like 100% perfect, but I have followed it like pretty freaking well, you know, I'm actually kind of proud of myself, you know, like, and so, but that's what I'm talking about. Like where have we been sitting here on the fence going back and forth? Um, forever trying to find the perfect solution or trying to figure out the right decision to make where we're kind of lost in stuff that doesn't matter. We're lost in the gray area, right? And like this is kind of the time to come back to like, okay, it's either this or that, right? So how can we in some way find a way to make what we want actually work for us rather than getting lost in all the details and all the what ifs and, you know, yada, 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 and coming back to the present moment and coming back to now and taking action now and making those decisions now. But that's so much of what this full moon is really bringing in. How can we start taking the action, making the decisions, moving forward. This full moon is about moving forward in some area of our lives and kind of breaking this, some kind of cycle in our lives that has to do with us going back and forth with us being in some kind of conflict, whether internally or externally about what to do about something. And like I said, it's really all internal. If you're dealing with a conflict externally, it's because there's a conflict internally. So it's from the inside out, not the outside in, right? And so that's what needs to be addressed for us to be able to move forward. And this is furthered by the fact that this full moon will basically be conjunct Chiron in Aries, you know, and Chiron is the asteroid of wounding and healing. I'm very familiar with it as it's conjunct my ascendant. (laughs) And so this is definitely a time of us kind of healing these past versions of ourselves that are coming up and that are really calling the shots in our lives, right? This is coming back into our own sense of leadership and ownership over our lives. Where have we been like blaming other people, blaming our trauma, you know, kind of stuck in the chaos of like the past or our trauma or our relationships or whatever, and blaming some other fucking thing in our lives instead of taking full accountability for being the creator in our lives, right? And actually moving forward from there, realigning with our power and healing these past versions of us by no longer allowing them to run the show. Hear them out. Yeah, like I'm not saying to just shove them down and ignore them because again, that's conflict, right? Where can you make peace with these past versions of you. And I want you to think about it as like going back to that version of you, whatever version you feel like is really kind of sabotaging your life right now or coming up in your life right now and literally making peace with this part of you, which means loving this part of you, unconditional love. This is farther backed by Mars and Cancer that is squaring this full moon. Cancer is really a sign that deals with the heart chakra, that deals with you know, a deep and profound sense of love and matters of the heart. In the past, this is also a transit really bringing in the past, right? So this is very much about, like, how can you give these past versions of you that are causing conflict in your life unconditional love? Can you tell them that you love them? Like, there's this, that so I'm, like, obsessed. Like, one of my favorite um, movie series is uh, the Divergent series. I love it. <laughs> um, my Aquarian moon and Aquarian Saturn loves like 
movies like that, but um, I forget what they're called. They're like uh, dystopian movies, you know? It's one of my favorite movie series, and plus I love Shailene Woodley. Like, I watched her um, Life as an American Teenager. I know a lot of people criticize it, but I was literally a teenager pregnant watching it, so um, I absolutely loved that show growing up because it was like the only show that I could relate to in my present moment, you know what I mean? Anyway, so in the Divergent series, the second one, and I don't want to spoil it too much if like you haven't watched it or you really want to, I highly recommend watching it. It is just so good on so many levels, but in the second um, in the second part of the series, Insurgent, at the very end, and it's so good, like if you're a Leo rising or have any Aquarius in you as well, this show is just so good because it's really about personality and it's really about the different, the different parts of yourself. But I mean, honestly, any of you could relate to it no matter what sign you are. But anyway, she's divergent because she has all these different traits that, and other people don't have all of these different traits. Um, and so she's like divergent. And basically at the end of the second one, she has to kind of do this like, um, psychological test where she passes each thing that, that really brings out these traits in her. And, um, she had been struggling with her kindness trait because in kindness is forgiveness basically. And she was really mad at herself because of some things that happened in the first, first movie. And so at the very end, basically, she, the last test is this kindness test and she's facing like the way that it's, the way that it ends up happening in her mind is like herself is like, she's facing this other part of herself that she views as like evil and shameful and vicious and deadly. And this part of herself is like instigating her and pushing her and trying to get her to fight. And and, you know, she's starting to, like, you know, get frustrated and she's starting to fight. And then the other part of herself tells her, like, you know, no one's going to love you. No one's, no one's going to care about you. And then she just kind of surrenders for a second. And she was like, she's like, that's not true. And her other part of herself is like, what do you mean? And she's like, I'll love you. And that part of herself just, like, starts dissipating. You know what I mean? And she basically forgives herself in that moment. It's like a really powerful, powerful moment. But so basically, that is what I'm talking about here, right? It's like, where are we seeing certain conflict? Because anything in Libra season is a mirror baby. And I mean, it, it teaches us, each sign teaches us lessons of, for life. So anything in any season is a mirror. You know, look at the things that are coming up on your social media, your algorithm. What are they mirroring about your insides? Look at things going on in your life right now. What are they mirroring about what's going on inside of you? right? What are they trying to show you about you, right? Everything is a mirror. Your dreams, you know, especially your dreams, what are they showing about what's going on inside of you? Are you having nightmares or are you, you know, having really peaceful dreams? Are you having really prophetic dreams? Like what are they showing you about what's going on within you, right? And so the other people in our lives can mirror us as well. When we have a problem with other people, they are mirroring what's going on within us, you know? And so this is so, so huge because with Mars and K answer, this is like, can you, can you move through this breakthrough that is really coming because this Aries full moon is really like a breakthrough, right? A huge breakthrough with Mars and Cancer squaring it, Pluto and Capricorn squaring it. These are really powerful transformational planets, you know, bringing up certain challenges that we've been under, you know, especially matters of the heart, emotional challenges, physical challenges, familial challenges, relationship challenges, and identity challenges, challenges of the self, right, was where it all comes back to. And that's what this Aries full moon is about. What's going on in your inner world? What is going on in your inner world that is stopping you from moving forward in your life? And this is the time to address it. This is the time to make peace with your past, to make peace with past versions of you, to make peace with all of the things that you're blaming outside of yourself, you know, that you're making into the enemy. This is a time to heal from the inside out, right? And that's what all of this stuff is pointing to, is showing us, right? This is so, so huge, right? Mercury's in Scorpio, you know, exposing exposing our deeper secrets and how we can speak about them, how we can be more vulnerable in our communication, right? How we can um, focus on and look at and kind of dissect where we felt shameful, where we keep things hidden, right? Out of fear. This is what is really, really happening for this full moon. 
um, happening in Aries on October 17th, literally a day before my birthday. My birthday is about to be on the 18th. <laughs> so comment happy birthday down below <laughs> if you're still here. Um, okay. I'm just looking at some notes that I wrote as well. So what is your, and these are some things that you can kind of ask yourself too for this full moon. Like what is your reality mirroring back to you? What are your challenges mirroring back to you? right? Because challenges are really just showing us where we need to grow. They're, they're character development. That's all challenges are, right? They're opportunities for growth, right? What past versions of you have been coming up lately or have even been coming up on and off over like the last 18 months, but are really prevalent right now, maybe, you know, where are past versions of you or past feelings about certain things or past situations, you know, where is that kind of holding you back from moving forward in your life? Where are you really sitting on the fence with certain decisions in your life? Where are you not facing certain truths in your life? Where are you judging yourself too harshly? Are judging others too harshly, right? Where are you at war externally that's pointing to the war within? Hopefully this resonated with you guys. Definitely let me know down below. That was really powerful. Um, I had, you know, I had a couple of notes written down, but um, it all kind of just eventually connected <laughs> once I got there. Anyways, thank you guys so, so much for watching. We're going to get into the rising signs now. And then also, um, if you stayed and are still here and you watched the whole first part of this video, make sure to comment down below. Badass alien. Thank you so much. I appreciate you guys so, so much. Like I said, I still have readings available. So if you would like to book a reading, uh, definitely make sure to do that down below. And let's get into what this means for your rising sign. Alrighty, Aries darling, welcome to your horoscope. If you are an Aries rising. Um, so this full moon is happening in your first house if you are an Aries rising, okay? So you have had a month so far that has been very, very focused on other people, your relationships, your significant relationships, and really finding ways to kind of clear out old past karmic cycles, old past things, and come to some kind of new understanding of peace and balance and harmony and diplomacy and, um, all of that in your relationship life, right? This has definitely been a time where you have been really learning a lot of karmic lessons to do with compromising and to do with um, anything to do with other people and relationships and how that has been mirroring back things about you. So with that being said, this full moon coming into your sign, into your first house is really shining a spotlight on you, where your inner world has been kind of in conflict in some way, right? Where you've been in some kind of conflict um, in terms of who you are and yourself. Maybe your focus hasn't quite been as strongly on yourself. And with this moon being on Chiron, this really represents a lot of healing, um, you know, a lot of healing of past wounds, past versions of you, coming back to who you are, coming back to um, yourself, you know, ownership in your life, self-ownership right? Really taking the wheel, coming back to your independence, coming back to your individuality. And this full moon could be causing a very intense breakthrough happening in, in multiple areas of your life right now uh, with your family, home, and private life versus your, your public life, your career, um, you know, your long-term goals, your future, you versus your relationships and other people. This is really all showing you that every area of your life right now is really kind of affected by your own internal world, your own internal programming, your own feelings and emotions about yourself, right? If you didn't watch the first video, part of this video, you're really missing out. You're really going to relate to it. It's going to be really powerful for you as an Aries rising. So definitely make sure that you go back and do that. Okay. And, uh, yeah, thank you guys so much for watching Aries and we're going to move on to Taurus risings. So for Taurus risings, this full moon is happening in your 12th house. So this is expo exposing a lot of kind of hidden behind the scenes, subtle shifts that need to happen for you to kind of feel realigned with your own sense of individuality, your own sense of sovereignty, your own sense of independence, your own sense of freedom in your life, the freedom to kind of move forward and do what you want to do and be more direct. And, you know, you may have been, you know, weighing out a lot of different options in terms of your health, in terms of your job, in terms of your day-to-day -day life and your relationships in your day-to-day -day life. 
Um, and this may be a time where it's like, you know what? I just need to do me. I need to take a break. I need to get away. I can't keep carrying everybody else's problems on my back. Maybe you've found a way to compromise and kind of mend certain conflicts in your life, but this full moon is really showing you and shining a light on where you need rest, healing, recovery, um, you know, where you need space and time as well too for yourself, right? That's so much what this full moon is about and what a lot of this cycle has been about for like the last almost 18 months now, um, you know, really kind of putting yourself and those kind of subconscious needs for yourself first, right? Um, and not being scared to kind of, um, act from that place and, and take, make, uh, make choices and make decisions and move forward, uh, from a place of loving yourself, right? And really understanding and realizing, um, your own, maybe a subdued sense of masculine energy that you've needed to kind of re-embrace or rebalance out in your life, you know? And so, um, yeah, let me know how that's going down below if you're a Taurus rising. Um, you could also find that there's a theme of like siblings, um, family, relatives kind of coming up with this, I keep scratching the mic, so apologize, um, kind of coming up with this full moon as well. And, um, you know, something where you are kind of overcoming a challenge, um, to do with those things in some way or overcoming, um, you know, some conflict there. Uh, so definitely let me know down below if you're a Taurus rising, what you're noticing. And if you missed the first part of this video, you're really, really missing out. You're going to get, I think a lot more out of that. Um, I, I always think people are going to get a lot more out of the beginning of the video than they are here at the end. This is just talking about where it all is happening for you, but I already kind of talked about a lot of the themes that are really happening in itself in the first part. So definitely um, make sure to go watch that if you uh, didn't watch it already. So moving on to Gemini Rising. So for Gemini Risings, this full moon is happening in your 11th house of friends, social connections, social events, acquaintances, you know, the people, the contacts that you have, the people that you know, friends of friends, you know, um, all of that. So this has been a time where, um, you know, with this full moon happening, this is a time where the spotlight is on that area of your life. Maybe you're coming out with something, maybe you're exposing something. Um, maybe you are moving first in terms of a crowd in some way, or maybe you're moving into some kind of leadership position, or there's themes of leadership, ownership, um, kind of making the choices and taking action that could really be coming up around this time. Um, you could be healing a lot of wounds um, around this time to do with, you know, leadership um, in your life, um, you know, and there's also kind of a theme of, you know, with the sun and Libra in your fifth house, love and romance and creativity and your hobbies. It's like you're kind of bringing your creativity out into the open and, and learning how to lead, um, you know, with your creative talents in some way. Um, so that could be something as well that you're really noticing. Um, this could also be bringing up some challenges or tensions that you need to resolve to do with your finances or to deal with emotional attachments in your life to certain things, um, possessions, things like that. So this could be a time where you're also really taking the lead there um, and learning how to kind of face these things and address these things that could be like matters of the heart in some area of your life. So let me know down below, Gemini, if that's relating with you. And if you missed the first part of this video, you're really missing out because that's the full version of, of your horoscope pretty much. Um, in the first part of this video, I really talk about what's happening and these horoscopes are more for where it's happening and like what area of life it's happening in for you. So definitely go miss or definitely go watch the first part because um, you're not going to want to miss out on that. It's, it's really powerful. So moving on to Cancer Risings. So for Cancer Risings, this full moon is happening in your 10th house of your career, your long-term goals, your future you know, where you're going in your life, your business, your brand, your public image, your reputation, all those kinds of things. So with the full moon happening here, it's shining a spotlight on that area of your life. And with it being on Chiron, it's shining a spotlight on where you need to heal certain wounds to do with this area of your life, right? To do with your career, to do with, um, you know, leadership, independence, sovereignty, to do with going first in your life, to making the first move, getting off the fence of weighing out everything or waiting till everything is perfect to make a decision, right? This is also, you know, with it being across the sun and the sun being in your fourth house of Libra, you've had a large focus on home and family and your private life and kind of trying to balance things out there, find the middle ground, find some diplomacy, compromise. But this is time to really kind of also 
go your own way, right? Walk your own path, do your own thing, and um, not feel selfish for it, not feel bad for it, right? Um, I think that you may have these emotional attachments to past versions of you or to feeling bad um, about, you know, making some decision to move forward in your life and to get the ball rolling in your life and to go after the things that you really want to go after. But this is a time of kind of releasing that. And that, that's what this full moon is about is um, a major breakthrough, right? Um, in terms of what's been slowing you down, what the emotional or internal or familial hangups are and um, what you really want, what you really feel and kind of putting that out for the world to see in some way or, um, you know, showing that through your actions in some way. So let me know down below, Cancer Risings, if that's resonating with you. And if you missed the first part of this video, you are really, really missing out. So go watch it. You're definitely going to relate to it. You definitely do not want to miss the first part of this video and the messages in there because they will definitely relate to you, okay? So moving on to Leo Risings. For Leo Risings, this full moon is happening in our ninth house. So this is really a time of coming back to what we believe in, what we believe about ourselves, what we believe about our the world, what we believe about leadership, what we believe about um, where we're going and, and, you know, what action have we been putting towards finding more meaning and purpose in our lives and realigning with our beliefs, our values, our morals, things like this, right? This is really coming up for this full moon. Um, there's a lot of spirituality for Leos right now. There's a lot of like realigning with your spiritual beliefs, realigning with your higher beliefs, right? And how that can impact and help you in your day-to-day -day life on more of a mundane day-to-day -day level in your day-to-day -day environment, your surroundings, um, etc. It's really kind of seeing the bigger picture, learning to be optimistic again, healing these like wounds that hold you back from being the, you know, independent, adventurous, um, you know, sovereign being that you want to be in the world or being the teacher or the mentor or the coach or, um, you know, the guide that you want to be in the world with this moon being in our ninth house. Um, so we're really kind of releasing old wounds and old baggage here and learning how to really come into <clears throat> harmony with, you know, certain areas of our lives that we have been feeling challenged by, right? Um, how to bring peace there and make decisions for our long-term gain that actually help us move forward in life. It's like we're releasing a lot of baggage. We're releasing a lot of past stuff right now with Mars in our 12th. Um, we're releasing a lot of burdens, a lot of like matters of the heart, things that we've been attached to that have no longer been healthy for us. Past versions of us that have been kind of holding us back or um, keeping us kind of sitting on the fence in our life and being almost like a a non-playing character in our lives rather than um, being in the driver's seat, right? Like that's so much what this full moon is bringing in for us. And if you missed the first part of this video, as a fellow Leo rising, you are really, really missing out. So I command you to go watch the first part of this video because it came from me, a Leo rising and my perspective. So you're for sure going to relate to it and it's going to be super power because I powerful because I was like on a little channeling spree there. So don't don't miss it. Go back and watch it if you if you skipped ahead. So I love you, Leo Risings. We are going to move on to Virgo Risings. So for Virgo Risings, this full moon is in your eighth house of other people's finances, shared finances, resources, debts, um, you know, banks, contracts, and also the occult. <laughs> so those are some uh, topics that you could see coming up right now in the light of this full moon, that this full moon is really shedding a light on for you. This is really about you finding and reclaiming that independence and that personal ownership um, in your life again with your finances or um, with certain challenging areas of your life that maybe you've been negating or avoiding or putting off, right? Um, so whether it's finances or something else that has just felt difficult or mysterious, um, or maybe even you kind of re realigning with certain, you know, occult practices or occult beliefs, you know, something like that. But it's really um, clearing out a lot of baggage and doing a lot of healing in terms of where you have felt stuck either financially or in some other way um, to other people, um, you know, where you've had certain attachments that have kind of kept you stuck or sitting on the fence, not making a decision in one way or the other. Um, so this is the, the time where it's like, okay, I'm finally going to move forward. I'm finally going to make this decision. I'm no longer going to keep letting other people, um, 
you know, whether it be relationships or friendships or, um, you know, past relationships or whatever, hold me on the sidelines of my own life anymore. Like I'm going to move forward. Right. And so this is really huge. Um, you could also be facing some personal kind of matters or matters of the heart in terms of friendships or acquaintances or friends of friends or social events or something like that um, could be coming up around this time too. So let, let me know down below, Virgo, how this is affecting you. I would really, really personally love to hear your feedback and um, what you're noticing come up around this time. And if you missed the first part of the video, you are missing out on a lot. So definitely go watch that. You're going to definitely relate to it. So make sure you go watch that. Libra baby, you drive me crazy. <laughs> Hello, Libra Risings. This Aries full moon is happening in your seventh house of relationships. So this is some major truth coming to the surface, being revealed about your relationship life. It could be coming from your other partner, or it could be about your other partner, or it could be coming from you towards your other partner. Um, either way, this is definitely a big relationship focus for you as a Libra rising um, and some big relationship healing coming in. So um, wounding or healing coming in where it's like, you know, things from the past or, you know, things from childhood could be coming up either for your partner or for you. Sensitive topics that are being kind of shown in the light now that are coming to the surface now, right? And um, this is about really understanding where um, either understanding your, your partner or uh, realigning with making a decision and moving forward with what benefits you, right? So this is really showing you kind of um, things that you have maybe been missing that have been going on underneath the surface within your relationships and, um, you know, kind of mirroring back to you maybe something that's been going on with you that's being mirrored within your relationship, right? And so there's a lot of mirroring going on here, right? When it comes to you as a Libra rising and then plus, you know, this full moon being in your opposite sign of relationships, there's just a lot of mirroring going on here. So it's really important to look for the deeper meaning, right? Now, this is also in some way feeling very intense, like a very intense breakthrough for you because it's also bringing up challenges in terms of your career, your future, your long-term goals, your public image, where you're wanting to go in terms of your worldly long-term, you know, goals and achievements and challenges that could be happening there that are really close to the heart, matters of the heart in terms of your career and long-term goals. And also how that is, you know, stirring up potentially some chaos or some deep-rooted stuff either from the past or from old kind of karmic cycles happening within your personal life, home, and family, you know? And so this is a very intense time as a Libra rising, and it's really kind of showing you um, either some things going on within your relationships that um, need to be addressed or directly addressed, or it's showing you some qualities that you need to embrace within yourself, some Aries qualities that you need to embrace within yourself being leadership, sovereignty, independence, individuality, right? Directness, being very direct, right? And so um, that is what I see coming up for you, Libra. If you missed the beginning of this video, you definitely want to go back and watch it because you are missing out on a lot and you will probably relate to a lot of it. <laughs> so definitely go and check that out. And we are going to also let me know if this is resonating down below with you. And we are going to move on to Scorpio Risings. So for Scorpio Risings, this full moon is happening in your sixth house of health, um, your day-to-day -day routines, your job, certain skills, tasks, and things that you do on a day-to-day -day basis to kind of keep your life going, to, to feel productive, etc. Right? So this could definitely be a time where you have been very kind of like in the background of your life, kind of like on the fence or um, dealing with like a lot of stuff behind the scenes in some way or taking a lot of space and time for yourself. And this Aries full moon is kind of coming in to say, hey, um, if you're wondering why a lot of these things are happening in your life or why you're dealing with a lot of these challenges in your life right now, it could have something to do with um, your health, um, you know, how you are going about things on a day to day basis you know, what you're feeling internally um, about your day-to-day -day life, your routines, your job, your health, 
Um, if you, you know, this could also be like a, a big kick in the butt to kind of be more productive, to make a decision and to move forward with something to do with your job, health, um, you know, day-to-day -day routines. That could also be the case. It's also very much about exposing old wounds and old baggage that kind of holds you back from taking the lead in your job or in your health or in your work as well. Um, with Mercury in your sign, this could also be very much a time where you are learning to speak more vulnerably and you're learning to speak more about what's going on within you and what your truth is. Um, you know, this is also very much about overcoming kind of challenges in terms of your lung, like your, your worldly beliefs, your education, um, certain travel pursuits, um, or challenges with distance in your life in some way, um, matters of the heart, you know, things like that. This is very much bringing up that with Mars in your ninth house. So these are a lot of the things that you could be noticing coming up, Scorpio. Um, it's very much about taking the charge in your life again to get to where you want to go, right? And that could be through the means of your job, your day-to-day -day routines and your health in some way, right? And so let me know down below, Scorpio, how that is resonating and what you are noticing coming up around the week of this full moon. I'd really love to hear your feedback. And then also, if you missed the first part of this video, you are really missing out. You're going to relate to that a lot more. It's a lot more in depth and there's so many powerful, powerful messages in there um, for the people watching this video. So definitely go back and watch the beginning if you missed it. And we are going to move on to Sagittarius. So... Sagittarius, this full moon is happening in your fifth house of love, romance, creativity, hobbies, uh, children, joy, you know, um, you know, kind of uh, dating and romance. So these are some things that you could be noticing come up around like, you know, the week of this full moon. Um, these are the topics that could kind of be on your mind right now or kind of suddenly appearing. Um, so this is a time where you are really wrapping up um, some healing to do with this area of life where maybe you have had some wounds, some childhood wounds or some inner child wounds or, um, you know, some issues around taking the lead and, um, you know, kind of moving and making decisions and taking action when it comes to, you know, this area of life, whether it be your creative pursuits, your hobbies, um, your dating life, your, your romantic life with your current partner, if you have a current partner, um, your children, things like that, right? So this is what this is really bringing up right now. Um, there, it can also be bringing up some challenges or some intense issues or attachments um, that you've been dealing with financially, right? Um, and kind of bringing a big, pretty big breakthrough there with that, right? Um, it's like, you can't make everybody happy, you know, with the sun and Libra in your 11th house. Um, there's been a, a large focus on friends and acquaintances and social, your social life and social events and networking, marketing, maybe, you know, whatever, anything to do with, you know, large groups of people. And, you know, this is a time where it's like, okay, I've been maybe compromising too much or compromising too much of myself. I need to get back to what's good for me, what really, gets my soul going, right? It really sparks my own fire and gets my own energy moving. And um, that just feels good to me, to my soul and the reason, you know, that I'm doing whatever it is that you're doing to begin with, right? And so that's what's really coming up for you right now. If you're a Sagittarius rising, let me know down below if you are seeing those themes, Sagittarius. And if you missed the first part of this video, you are missing out, okay? Like you are missing out big time. It is a very powerful first half of this video. You definitely need to watch it. There are definitely going to be messages in there for you. So definitely go back and watch that if you missed it. And we are going to move on to Capricorn rising. So if you're a Capricorn rising, <laughs> this full moon is happening in your fourth house of home, family, and your private life. This is really your private personal sector of your chart, um, you know, that really deals with your home life and personal matters, matters of the past, matters of family, um, things that maybe you like to keep more private, you know. Um, so this full moon is really shining a light on this area of life and something that needs to be released realized or let go of here or mended here in some way, faced here even in some way, right? And so this is something that you could really be noticing coming up right now. Um, there's been a large focus on trying to balance everything out and harmonize everything within your career. A lot of compromises, contracts, relationships, um, you know, a lot of focus there in terms of your career, your long-term goals, and managing that area of your life in, in the most harmonious way that you have, that you've been able to. But this full moon is coming in to say, hey, there's some more deeper, emotional, sensitive, personal, private, familial, 
um, matters going on in terms of your home life, going on in terms of the foundation of who you are in your life and where can we kind of come to terms with these things or make decisions about these things, prioritize these things and take action on these things that need to be taken action on, you know? And with that being said, you know, Mars is very involved in this full moon as it rules this full moon and it's being squared by this full moon and Mars is in Cancer in your opposite sign of relationship. So this is bringing up and has been likely bringing up some, you know, challenges or changes or, um, you know, matters of the heart, matters of your relationships and, you know, kind of a theme of potentially realizing certain attachments or certain things, um, emotional things that may need to change within your relationships or your relationship dynamics, right? And with that tying into your home and family life, I'm sure there's some kind of relation there happening. Um, this full moon uh, can bring in a really big breakthrough for you though, um, where it's kind of like you have to do uh, what's best for you or what's best for your family and you have to make that decision and it may be a quick decision. Um, but yeah, so let me know down below Capricorn if that's resonating, if you are noticing some of these things come up. And if you missed the first part of this video, definitely go back and watch it because that's going to give you a lot more in-depth clarity, so many more messages that came through for this full moon that you don't want to miss out on that you're going to relate to. So definitely go back and watch the first half if you didn't already. And we are going to move on to Aquarius rising. So for Aquarius risings, this full moon is happening in your third house. So, you know, with, you know, the sun moving through Libra, having that solar eclipse in Libra two weeks ago, there's been a large focus for you on your worldly beliefs, uh, what you believe on a larger scale, what you believe in terms of what's going on in the world, whether it's your religious beliefs, your spiritual beliefs, your political beliefs, you know, just your, your bigger outlook on the world and kind of finding a way to mend that or find peace, you know, um, with how you see things in the world. Um, <clears throat> find kind of peace with your own morals, your own beliefs. Um, there's been a huge focus as well <clears throat> with the sun in your ninth house on education, um, you know, maybe foreign lands or traveling, um, you know, anything like that, um, teaching, mentorship, etc. So, uh, and, and kind of like, uh, you know, social stuff as well and how that kind of ties into your beliefs and ties into your outlook. Now with the moon, you know, this full moon in Aries happening in your third house, um, this is kind of bringing your focus back down to the here and now, bringing your focus back down to your current reality, what is happening around you, what's happening locally, what's happening in your, your literal current environment of where you are right now, <clears throat> and how can you address some things that maybe have been holding you back from moving forward in your, you know, um, in your life, you know, in the now moment right? Where have you kind of not been taking the lead or not been taking ownership in your life for moving forward or for the way that your environment is or the way that your situation is, right? Maybe you've been kind of so focused on what's going on on like a larger scale in the world or, you know, whatever that you have kind of missed what's going on right in front of you. And, um, maybe you've been so focused on like, you know, um, others that you haven't been focused on yourself and kind of taking the lead in your own life, coming into um, your own kind of self-accountability of like, okay, if I want my current reality to change, if I want my current environment to change, that's up to me, right? I make that decision. Um, and so this is kind of what this full moon is really bringing in for you and kind of having you look at and kind of exposing a light on for you. Um, <clears throat> it could also be bringing up certain challenges, changes, or issues um, to do with your day-to-day -day, uh, health, work, and day-to-day -day routines um, with Mars and Cancer in your sixth house. So, you know, there could have been, there could be like a lot of like kind of emotional changes or challenges or issues kind of coming up with work or, you know, with your health. And, um, you know, with this full moon squaring it, it's kind of like, okay, like, are we going to make these changes or not? Are we going to uh, deal with this situation and face this situation or not? Um, you know, you can kind of blend these two energies of the full moon together, like Libra with the understanding and finding peace and Aries with the action and taking the lead and the leadership, right? Um, both can harmonize together, right? You don't have to just be like one or the other, right? And so that is what I'm really seeing for you um, as a Aquarius rising. Let me know down below. 
if that resonated and if you are seeing some of these things come up in your life, I would really love to hear your feedback and let me know what the fuck's going on. You know, like, let me know what's going on down below. And if you missed the first part of this video, you're really missing out. I think you're really going to relate to a lot of the powerful messages in the first part of this video. Um, you know, I just, I kind of had like a, a channeling moment and some really powerful stuff was coming through that you're not going to want to miss. So definitely go back and watch the first half of this video if you haven't already. So moving on to Pisces risings, last but not least. So Pisces, this full moon for you is happening in your second house of your income, finances, possessions, attachments, the things that you own. So this is definitely a time where you are kind of looking at your priorities, looking at your values, looking at the things that matter most to you in your life, right? You know, you've had kind of this focus with the sun in Libra in your eighth house on really weighing things out to do with um, you know, your finances and your, you know, the finances that the shared finances that you have shared resources that you have relationships with other people and the things that are involved with them, um, you know, kind of really intimate matters like you've been focused on and how to kind of find a middle ground there, how to find an equilibrium there, how to find some harmony, some diplomacy, some compromise there. Right. But this Aries full moon is kind of like, okay, you've had time to kind of weigh things out, to kind of judge things, to kind of figure out, you know, what's right, what's what what doesn't feel right, what does feel right. Now it's time to take action. Now it's time to start moving things forward. It's time to kind of face the music, face the challenges, face the issues, and do what feels right for you, right? It's time to um, step into your leadership, you know, step into um, ownership of everything, you know, ownership of your life, your money, your finances, your possessions, your attachments, your priorities, whatever it is, and move, right? This full moon is about moving, right? Making, taking action, making decisions, being direct about how you feel and what's going on, right? Um, also, with that being said, you know, this could definitely be bringing up some, you know, matters of the heart to do with children, romance, dating, um, creative projects, hobbies, etc. with, you know, Mars, being in cancer in your fifth house, right? So um, this could definitely, you know, and Mars is kind of squaring this full moon and it's the ruler of this full moon. So this could be bringing in those kind of topics as well to some degree where maybe you've had some changes happening there, some, um, you know, challenges happening there. Um, you've been kind of letting go of the past or letting go of certain attachments potentially um, around this full moon, you know? So this this is definitely a time where it's like, okay, I'm, I'm no longer weighing things out. I'm no longer going back and forth about what I need to do. I'm just making the decision and I'm moving, right? It's time to move forward. It's time to move on, right? And that's really what I'm getting for you, Pisces rising. So let me know if that's relating down below and what you are noticing come up for this full moon. I'd really love to hear your feedback. And if you missed the first part of this video, you're definitely going to want to go back and watch that because it's very, very powerful and you're likely going to relate to a lot of it. So um, definitely go back and watch that if you missed it. And with that being said, thank you so, so much for watching that is the end of this video and I will see you guys in the next one.